hip, hip, hooray for DNA. It provides the key to the plans for making everything in you and me. So far, we talked a bit about Gregor Mendel and who Gregor Mendel was. This was obviously was Gregor Mendel. And it's important to know that he lived in the 1800s. So he died somewhere in the 1880s. But when he died, his actual ideas weren't picked up at all yet. They were still in the, in the mystery circles. But he talked about things that he could describe as factors. And these factors were what actually caused inheritance. Obviously nowadays we know that these factors refer to genes, but he just called them factors. But that was more or less the level we were at in the 1880s. He found that there was a phenotype, which was the appearance. The phenotype was the appearance. For example, if something was green, it had a phenotype of green. And genotype were these, he considered them factors. So he said that every single trait was coded by two factors. For example, if the phenotype was green, it could be that one of the alleles was coding for the green, another allele was coding for the yellow. But he didn't know these were genes and he didn't call them alleles yet, he just referred to them as these factors. Now, then came Sutton and Bavari. So, we actually have to cover these guys, which is why I'm mentioning all this. The dot point itself says, outline the roles of Sutton and Bavari in identifying the importance of chromosomes. So, we have to cover chromosomes a bit and what they are, and link chromosomes to these factors that Mendel described. Right, so, Next part is to actually mention who these people were, the ones we have to discuss. We've got Theodor Bavari, which is this person right here. He was a German scientist who experimented with sea urchins. So here we've got a sea urchin, and he did lots of experiments with sea urchins, and he looked at their cell division, so through meiosis, when the gametes were formed, and also fertilization, so when, for example, the egg and the sperm came together. So he looked at meiosis, but he also looked at fertilization. His main focus was fertilization and what happened during fertilization. Now he, he did his experiments in the 19, early 1900s, I think it was 1902. So yeah, Mendel died in 1888, and this was about 15 years after Mendel. Now what was known at the time? There were a couple of things that we knew. For example, at the time, so 1902, we knew that every living thing had a set number of chromosomes. So for example, we knew that humans had 46 chromosomes. And that was just a fact that we knew already. And we knew that sperm and egg fused during fertilization. So during fertilization, we knew that a sperm and egg came together and they made something called a zygote, which was that combination. So that's what we knew. But Theodore Bavari added to that, added to our knowledge, because of these experiments. So what he tested first, he, he did a normal fertilization where he put the male sperm and a female egg together in normal fertilization. So the egg and the sperm both contributed 50% of the chromosomes. That's what we realized so far. We just knew that everyone had a set number of chromosomes, but he found out that if in a normal fertilization, you had 50% of the chromosomes coming from the male, the father, and 50% coming from the female. So that was new. We just knew that we had a set number of chromosomes. We didn't know that each contributed half of those chromosomes. And also what he realized was that in that case, we had, so in a normal fertilization, we had a shared characteristics, which means that we have some characteristics of the female and some characteristics of the male in that normal scenario. So there were shared characteristics. Now he also did the same experiment, but he only had one set of chromosomes present. So for example, he fertilized the egg, but he had only the male chromosomes in it, in there, so only half the number, and only the male chromosomes, and no female chromosomes. And then what happened is it was only characteristics from the male. So only characteristics from the male if he only had the male chromosomes present during fertilization. Only characteristics of the male. That's important because now you realize, okay, well, if everything's normal, if there's eggs in the sperm, so if the female and the male both contribute chromosomes, then there are shared characteristics. Whereas if only we only get chromosomes from the male, so from the parent, male parent, that means the actual offspring will resemble the male. 
So you kind of had the idea that maybe these chromosomes, these chromosomes were somehow related to inheritance. Beforehand, Mendel just called them the factors. But now he established that, okay, well, maybe there is more to the chromosomes and how some of them are linked to these factors. And that was Theodore Bauer. He had the experiments with sea urchins. And it was also Walter Sutton. And he's important as well. And what he found out was that chromosomes always occurred in pairs. And remember Mendel. Mendel said that, you know, there's always two of these, and he called them the factors. But he said that whatever they are, there's always two of them. One is recessive, or one can be recessive, one can be dominant, but there's always, they always come in pairs of two. And what Walter Sutton realized is there were two identical chromosomes as well. So always, the chromosomes always came, also came in pairs of two. So each one of those is a chromosome, and they came, they come in identical pairs of two. Just like the actual alleles do. Right, so again, Walter Sutton, and he did experiments with grasshoppers. So Walter Sutton, the experiments with grasshoppers, he looked at what happened when he crossed grasshoppers together. And he made very fine sketches. So he sketched, he sketched the actual picture that he got. So for Walt Sutton, he did experiments with grasshoppers, whereas Theodore Bavari did experiments with sea urchins. But he realized when observing fertilization and meiosis that there were two chromosomes, two identical chromosomes, which would be the same as his Mendel's two factors. So again, there was a link between chromosomes and Mendel's idea of factors. But he also realized that during meiosis, the number of chromosomes is halved. And if you remember, there was a law of segregation. So there was Mendel's law of segregation, law of segregation, which said that at some point, the actual allele split, and the offspring will only get one of each. So during his observations, during Walter Sutton's observation, he realized that the actual chromosomes split as well during meiosis, and that the gametes, so again, just quickly go over what a gamete is. A gamete is, for example, a sperm is a gamete, and a egg is a gamete. So these get produced during meiosis, and he realized that the end product, so the end sperm, only had half of the original chromosomes. So even though there were two originally, only got one, each sperm only had one. And same, remember, when it comes to Mendel and how we do Mendel, uh, Mendel's inheritance, we have these two alleles, and then we only get one from each parent. So we get maybe either this one or this one from this parent. From this. So this says the male sperm. So the male sperm will either have one G, capital G or two cap or the other capital G. We won't have both of them. Same the female. We're going to have one of, this, of the undercase Gs or the other undercase G. We won't be getting both of them. So it'll be one from the male, one from the female. And he found the same idea when it comes to chromosomes. They behave in the same kind of way. And then he realized, the last thing he realized, was that upon fertilization, the full number of chromosomes is restored. So if this, for example, were the chromosome, half the chromosome from the father, so if this were the male chromosome, when this were the female chromosome, he got one he got from the mother. So at the end, we had again, we had that same pair of chromosomes, the two we had originally. So half during meiosis, but then it got full again during fertilization. And if you remember Mendel, so we have the same thing. We have uh, during the Punnett squares, we can usually get the ratios. And then the actual offspring will have one from the male and one from the female. And that's your newborn. Your newborn will be a combination of the two. Right? So what are these chromosomes? We're going to cover these chromosomes in much more detail very soon. But just to give you a quick heads up of what a chromosome is. A chromosome is just lots of DNA, so you can, it's lots of DNA in a bundle, lots of DNA in a bundle, and within that DNA, there are genes. Genes are basically DNA that code for protein. Now, each one of those areas might code for different things. So, you know, this brown might be the hair color, the blue might be the eye color, the body hair might be coded by this blue dots here, and the same one on the female and the male, the same side. Because remember, we, an allele was just a version of a gene. So lots of genes on chromosomes, and there's two pairs. Each might have, have the same gene, but just a different version of that gene. So this might code for body hair. This might be a lot, little body hair, and this one here, little body hair. And then the same one on the female might code for lots of body hair. But yeah, just know the, the idea that these chromosomes have lots of genes on them, 
And these genes are these factors that Mendel described. So I'll quickly talk about again about these roles. So other than the roles of Sutton and Bavari, Bavari realized that chromosomes during fertilization, that half the chromosomes were given from the female and half from the male. That was not known at the time yet, which already suggested that maybe Mendel, Mendel's inheritance was there. And he also realized that if you only have the male chromosomes present, the offspring itself will only have the male characteristics, which again suggests that somehow the chromosomes might be these, relate to these factors. And Walter Sutton did experiments with grasshoppers, and he did lots of sketches of what he saw. And he looked at meiosis and fertilization of grasshoppers. And he realizes that if they always came in pairs, these chromosomes came in pairs, just like Mendel's factors always came in pairs. He also realized that they, at some um, point they split, so they split into two. It's just like with Mendel and his law of segregation, that the actual alleles split into two as well. And he realized that upon fertilization, so when, once the baby is fertilized, it's, it's, it's the zygote is produced, that we have a full number again. And half came from the father, half came from the mother, just like with Mendel's, where we have one G coming from the mother, one G coming from the father. And yeah, these chromosomes, you can just view them as having lots of genes on them. And these genes were these factors, and these chromosomes have lots of them. But we'll go over much more of that in detail as well. So don't worry, if, you do, if you're still a bit confused, we'll go over that soon again. Thank you for watching.